Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. This time around it's another gun study video which gives us an opportunity to talk in some detail about one of the guns in the collection. Uh, now before I do though I'd remind everybody please do subscribe and make sure your notifications are turned on for when we launch new videos. It makes sure that you get notified of course that's what it's called um, of when we put new videos up and make them public. Really important because otherwise you're likely to miss some of the announcements we make. Uh, and, and please do subscribe to our Patreon as well where we're providing extra information in terms of our archive material, small arms trials and development uh, notes and lots more material we can't just easily share on the website and it's primary source material so excellent for research and there's something about many many small arms and even the latest ordnance board memoranda that include aircraft bombs naval materials artillery and lots lots more some miscellaneous stuff in there about respirators um, it's really interesting and quite distracting for when you're trying to just index it so that's available on patreon where you're able to join from just three pounds dollars or euros a month and it's really important to make sure that the collection's supported in that way at the moment. The association doesn't have its income from visits like it normally would at this time. Uh, so yeah, really key to, to get that. But yeah, the, the, moving on to the gun study element, um, what this looks like is just a normal Mark I Australian made Vickers machine gun uh, that are, are dominant in collections, uh, certainly around the UK uh, from importing you know, several thousand of these back in the late eight, late eighties and early nineties by Wright and Arms, and this one's quite uh, different though because it didn't start its life as a Mark One Vickers machine gun. It actually started its life as a Mark Twenty One armored fighting vehicle Vickers, which wouldn't have the the cross piece. It would have a a um, pistol grip and. Uh, a side opening top cover and it was made to go in some of the Australian made uh, armoured fighting vehicles into their tanks. So really interesting uh, that actually by the time that these were being made and produced they decided they didn't need them and of the 284 that were made they decided to convert those to Mark 1 infantry or, or standard land service guns. So they had the, the pistol grip wasn't used, they had the cross piece put on. Um, there are some nuances with it though and it seems to be actually a heavier barrel casing uh, possibly because it was going to go into an armoured vehicle not necessarily as armour um, because it still wouldn't uh, be but perhaps to protect it from uh, you know, dinks and, and, and knocks and things like that it does seem slightly thicker and we did a blog post on the weights of some of the different Vickers machine guns in the collection a while ago and this certainly seems to be the heaviest uh, by a fair few hundred grams so a fair few ounces uh, which does make a difference particularly if you're then going to go and use it as a um, land service gun being carried by infantry or machine gun battalions. We'll take a closer look at some of it. It's worth saying though, this gun in the collection has been a donor gun. So when we've had uh, our firing guns built, we've taken parts off of this. So it isn't um, made in Australia parts throughout. It has whatever we've been able to then put back on. We will rebuild it properly at some point, but that's not so, but it does give me an opportunity to talk about some of the different markings, some of the different makers that were involved in Vickers machine guns in general, as we, as we take the camera off the stand and have a, have a closer look. Another couple of bit of advert stuff though. We've had a couple of questions about these posters that are in the background. So these are all copied from originals that we have in the collection here. Uh, and we do, we do sell reproductions of them. These are A3 size and we have those in stock and ready to go. But we do them larger all the way up to A0, A0, which is about, I think A0 is the size of eight of these posters. So you can have one of those up in that size. And they blow up very nicely. Um, that's all available on our website and we'll put the link in the description below. Uh, but then we've got our Teespring t-shirts as well that was a comment recently. Um, these are all available through our Teespring shop and we'll put that link there as well. So let's take a closer look uh, at some of the parts on this gun. Before we do though, I wanted to take an opportunity to show you what the Mark 21 actually looks like. So this is Ian Skeneton's book on Australian service machine guns. And this is the Mark 21. Uh, so as I said, it's got a pistol grip at the back here, double finger trigger, this one's in left hand feed, and it has a, um, not, not this example, uh, this is a right hand feed with no um, uh, pistol grip, so this is set up for remote fire through a Bowden cable there, which is something um, much more familiar to aircraft guns, but it does have yeah, this side opening top cover. 
Now, this is, um, you know, gives a, a really sort of brief description of the conversion um, and what happened to them. And, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because, like I say, they, they, they were converted to, um, to uh, infantry guns without really seeing service. You know, quite, quite remarkable. And from production numbers, you can see that I, I think I said, yeah, 284 Mark 21 guns were made. Uh, you know, two early prototypes, 219 between July 42 and 1943, and then 63 uh, between 43 and 44. So, yeah, 284 in total. And it talks about that many of them were converted to the two, uh, to Mark 1 guns. Uh, slight discrepancy in numbers uh, here because we've got Army Inspection Record showing 238. Uh, but it's possibly that this difference uh, in numbers is the number that were converted to Mark 1 before leaving the factory. So, they're serial numbered with a T prefix. Now, if we go up and have a put that to one side for a moment. And we go and have a look on the gun. What we can see is that the gun we've got is T118, and that's been crossed through, and then B2240 put below it. Uh, so you can see this was a Mark 21 gun. Uh, this is its Mark 21 serial number, crossed through, and then this is the infantry serial number that was assigned to it. And it actually runs in series with some of the other guns that we've got in the collection. Uh, this small stamp, in case you were wondering, is the UK deactivation mark, because this is one of the deactivated guns in the collection. But what's also noticeable, and this yeah, this T series, this T number is is above the B, um, because it's in line here. Because this hole here would actually have been for the um, feed hole, uh, the fill hole for the steam. So the steam tube uh, on the armored fighting vehicle guns was all inside the tank, and it could be plumbed into the tank's radiator and cooling system. So this hole here has actually been filled back in. Uh, this is the hole for the um, uh, uh, plug, I believe, that would or th that would hold the chain on to the cover that goes in here. So another one of these you know, uh, small plugs uh, would be in here. And then that would, uh, you'd have the two plugs next to each other um, to be able to use it in the armoured fighting vehicle. So this is one of the telltale signs that it was a converted tank gun. So I had a little bit of a mistake on there. We've got the um, plug here uh, that wouldn't have been there. That's been put in as the infantry conversion because what we've got down below is another filled in hole and, um, and chain attachment here. So this would be the drain plug that is at the front of the gun on the infantry gun. Um, whereas that then would be the uh, filling plug or the steam plug uh, on, on the top there. So yeah, they've, they've moved these two. Uh, they, this gun doesn't seem to have been uh, converted too greatly from, so there's some marks up here, but I think those are just uh, Cosmoline marks, Cosmoline wear. This doesn't seem to have had a uh, side opening top cover. So quite possibly, you know, th these bits have been, th this breech casing has been replaced as part of the conversion. It's truly only the trunnion and the barrel casing that is part of the uh, the Mark 21 gun. There doesn't seem to be anything else that's really a telltale sign of it. Uh, so quite you know, quite an a overwhelming conversion, but they've saved uh, you know literally only the very bare part of the gun. Now, uh, as I said, this is a bits of gun, so we've got uh, you've got some bits missing. This just sits sort of a little bit out of the way at the moment in the collection. We'll get this water jacket put on it, and we'll, and we'll refit some of the chains and things from the spares that we've got. Uh, but it is an interesting gun because, let's say, it is that uh, Mark One to Mark or Mark Twenty One to Mark One conversion. So it's scarce. It would be interesting to know if there are any out any more out there. Um, yeah, we've certainly I, I've certainly seen a few in the past. Uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing at this front end that really tells you that it was a uh, Mark 21 gun either. Um, but yeah, as I said, we've seen a few in the past, different serial numbers. This is 118, uh, you know, crossed through. So what I said, yeah, 118. Uh, so please do uh, let us know if you've got any more. To move on to just some general sort of awareness of parts and markings, uh, what we've got here is a MA42. So that's made in Australia, 1942. That's one of those sort of standard marks. We then also have here a slash 44. That's 
what have we got? A DA44, I believe that is. So that's Dubbo Annex. You've got this big long list of parts annexes to the small arms factory at Lithgow, uh, which is in New South Wales. And all of these annexes were, were building parts um, that then got sent in. Now, when they weren't nearby in the conventional UK sense. You know, they're like the other end of England, um, but connected by trains. Uh, they, you know, uh, the United States might consider them local, uh, but we certainly wouldn't. However, they clearly are local in New South Wales. Um, this is a, a, a top cover off an Australian gun as well that we've put back on here. Um, yeah, the, the, these are very blocky and very heavy. They're very well made and very sturdy, and they're certainly what uh, we, we come to expect. Now, you can see on here we've got that CA this time. It's Kaura, C-O-W-R-A, CA44. Uh, and then this uh, inspector's mark where you've got the crown over a let set of letters and numbers. That's the inspector and then Al at the bottom. That's for Lithgow. So that's one of the inspectors that went uh, that went through Lithgow. We've got, uh, just as, as a point of note, because I can just see it in the camera, this is sat on an Australian tripod made at Randwick Tramways, which is a suburb in the southeast of Sydney now, uh, 1942. It's got this little notch on it. You see that on later Australian, well, it was a conversion done on all tripods. So we'll take, I'll probably mention that a few times as this tripod gets used quite a bit uh, for, for some of the guns. Then we've got the collar and roller here. Now this one's, as I said, this has been put on. It's drill purpose. It's had its DP stamp in there. Um, got two different tone uh, wood uh, on the on the cross piece, and you can see that that's had some damage uh, when you start to look at it square on. Yeah, you know, one's been knocked in. Um, yeah, you know, we again see this quite a lot on different. Uh, parts of uh, different cross pieces one of which you know, we've got a couple that have been broken and rewelded on some of these um, one of which has got a bit of airborne provenance we'll talk about that again in the future uh, so let's spin it let's shut that top down spin it around the other way uh, while we're doing it let's have a look at the muzzle attachment nothing really of any note and let's say you've got a few chains and bits and pieces missing on here it's quite shameful actually uh, but yeah, we'll get we'll get round to doing it. We've got quite a lot to do. Um, it's just finding the time to do so. So yeah, nothing of, of any note along here. This is a re recent replacement, as is this. Uh, no distinct markings on any of these. Um, we've got a little bit of a stamp in there, but I can't really discern what it is. This is a, a cast steel, quite a late um, cast steel dial sight bracket, and it has uh, you know it, it's clearly not been finished very well um it still works it's functional it would you know it should have some sort of sheen on it really um what else have we got on this on this pin here we've got a vac you know vickers armstrongs at crayford uh that is what you'd see on most second world war british made parts that were made by vickers uh, some obviously made in different factories and you should see our spare parts video about some of those things um i think that's probably you know that gun exhausted for obvious spare parts what we'll just open quickly is have a look at the feed block uh, and see what the feed block tells us anything in particular we can have that out uh, this is an australian feed block ma uh, again this is that made in australia marking and we've got a 1942 is that with a couple of broad arrows there and the v303 which is vickers 303 Nothing really to note on the top there. Anything on the bottom. We've got the serial number in there. B674. So that's off, or is that 8674? Uh, 8674. So that's the gun that the serial number was um, originally from. So yeah, sometimes you get these. What A word of caution, though, is that may not be gun 8674 as in the Australian series. Uh, it probably is in this case, but sometimes the letter prefix is miss missed off these. So you just see it like 2296, um, because the chances of having gun 2296 and B2296 in the same location where you need the serial numbers is highly unlikely. Uh, so you sometimes just see the numbers of the guns uh, put on the parts. Uh, you know, as we said, this is a, uh, this is a uh, deactivated gun. Um, the barrel and everything's welded in. You can just see the pin, the, the weld top of the pin that's put in there. Um, 
but that's probably all we're going to be able to, to learn from it. As you said, yeah, it, it's not a case of, um, you know, this gun isn't what we want to, you know, it's not the parts that we want to learn off on the, learn from on this gun. It's the, um, ooh, not going back in very well, there we go. Um, it's, the, it's the fact that it was a 21 and it was converted back to you know, a Mark I, which is really interesting and telling from the perspective of you know, the history of, of the Vickers. So Lithgow produced Mark I guns in the majority. Yeah, they produced about, um, oh, dear, yeah, everything's stiff on this gun. There we go. A um, little bit of brute force and ignorance. Uh, they produced their, their Mark I guns in quantity. Uh, they, they produced, about, I think it's about 12,000 of those. Um, they produced the Mark 21, and we saw 284 of those. And then they produced the Mark V aircraft gun, which I believe is about 500 of those as well. So yeah, interesting to know that they didn't just produce these standard um, Mark I guns. I hope that's been of interest and you've learned that, you know, this Mark 21, uh, there were, just worth saying, the British series stops at Mark 7. There were no Mark 8, Mark 9, Mark 10. Uh, the Australians just restarted at Mark 21. Um, it's very similar to a British Mark 7 though, uh, perhaps a simpler version of it. So yeah, hopefully that's of interest. Uh, please subscribe, join us on Patreon and tune in for more gun study videos in the future. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.